after me in good voice. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We thank you that your presence banishes all doubt and fear. So we come against everything on assignment today to stop your word from going forth. We thank you that we do have ears to hear and we do have hearts to receive. And we thank you for the victory we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, Lord, let the word of our mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. My strength, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to deal with Engaged Lesson 2. Engaged Lesson 2. And the subtitle is Transformation. Engaged Lesson 2. Transformation. Sometimes we come together and we think that all we need to get is information. We, we, we write notes. We, we do all those things, but the, but, the, but the focus is, is that you would be transformed. And that's what's missing sometimes in, in the church experience, is that people are transformed or changed. It's one thing to be church or to be churchy, but are you being transformed? Are you changing? Are you turning into something else? And, 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 and this is the goal. This is why God did what he did through Jesus Christ, that we could become something else. That we could move from one place to another, that we, we not say to stay the same. And if we're staying the same, then we're doing something wrong. So the house of God has to be a place that you look to for transformation. To hear how you can be transformed through the beautiful gospel of Jesus Christ. And so as, as I deal with this, 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 this engaged series, a few more we're we just going to focus in on Jesus. Because sometimes we don't even hear about Jesus as much. And, and, and so, so you need to be transformed. We need to be transformed. It's, it's, it's an ongoing process. How many of you know it's an ongoing process? It's a growth process, and it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop because you get into trouble. 
It doesn't stop because trouble comes to your life. It doesn't stop because you decide to be politically correct. You're going to grow wrong or you're going to grow right. One way or another, you're going to grow some way. Amen? Amen. Now, transformation is a journey in change. And every time I think about transformation, I go back to the metamorphosis of the butterfly. And metamorphosis is a Greek word, and it means change. And as beautiful, as beautiful as the butterfly is, and as, as gorgeous as it is, especially the monarch butterfly, which has the beautiful colorations and the, the, the long wingspan, beautiful body, is just a, 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 a picture of art in motion. It is beautiful. I went and I started saying, I need to just see how the butterfly gets to where it, 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 it is. Well, it starts out, it's a four-phase process before you get to the butterfly. It starts out with, with, with an egg that's the size that can fit on the top of a pen. One egg. Really, several eggs can fit on the top of a pen. And then, then when, when the egg continues to grow and multiply and develop out, Phase two is what is known as the larvae or larvae and the caterpillar stage. And, and most of us look at caterpillars because they look like worms and we say, ugh. But inside the caterpillar is a butterfly. But what I did not know, and I kept reading about it, well, let me talk about the caterpillar some more. Its whole life is spent eating. It eats all the time. It crawls from one leaf to another, eats that, finishes it, crawls down the stalk, eats another one. It eats all the time. Oh, that was a good segue for me to talk about people eating. Eats all the time. Its eyesight is not fully developed. It, it just knows where the next food source is. Short legs, no wings, and it just crawls everywhere it goes. The beauty is, is that they don't get picked off by a, a, a flying prey. So it, it, it eats until it eats until it splits its own body skin. Then it keeps eating. You think because it split its body skin one time, it will stop. But it keeps eating until it does it again. And then it does it again. And then it does it again. Three to four times it split that skin and, and keep eating. Because it's eating for the adult life. I'll explain that when I get down a little bit. And so after it's eating until it's met its, its, its quota. I don't know how it knows, but nature so designs it so. He, it knows when I've eaten enough for the next process to kick in. It starts spinning a web and encompassing itself in what is known as, uh, uh, the technical term is a chrysalis, but it is called a, 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 a cocoon. Some places it's called a papua. And it leaves one strong strand of silk to hang that cocoon by. It attaches itself to, and it keeps spinning around, spinning around, and, and by the time it's finished, it, it is totally encompassed inside of that cocoon, protected, and it sways in the, sways in the wind, and it's hanging there. The caterpillar is inside. But it's life in the cocoon that starts the transformation process. Because what the caterpillar was outside, when he gets in the cocoon, in phase three, he starts breaking down, all parts break down until there is no caterpillar at all, just a slight essence of what it was. Broke down. And out of that essence, 
all the eating was enough food. Out of that essence was is some small cells that are coded to create wings, legs, eyes, the new body, the new legs, the new everything. Just And so all of a sudden, out of what is just moistness at the bottom of the cocoon starts springing a different life. Until it keeps growing and growing and growing until it is strong enough to break the silk bind that it's in. And then what emerges is not what went in the cocoon. And what emerges after it gets out, it dries its wings off and then it, it knows that once they're dry, I can flap them and I can start flying. It's called change. It's called transformation. And so every one of us needs to transform. Don't get stuck on one of the faces. Our scripture lesson comes from Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1. And this is Paul opening up this famous chapter with a bag. With a bag. And it's a bag that you would transform. I'll deal with verse 2 probably next week. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Some of the things we think are a big deal are just everyday average stuff you ought to do. I'm striving to, I'm trying to. It's your everyday average service. It's, it should be habitual, like getting up and whatever you do as far as morning routine and evening routine is just, is that, is that regular? Wow. He starts by saying, I, be, I, I beseech you. Paul appeals to our will and calls us to make a choice. I beseech you, make a choice. About what you're going to do with your body. Now I'm going to go on down in that. And I know sometimes when, when it says present your body holy and acceptable to God. When we deal with the word holy is, is a nasty four letter word to us sometimes. Because you know our first thing when we encounter holy. We'll tell that person you, oh, you being holier than thou. You ought to say amen thank you. I'm glad it's showing. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. I beseech you, you present your body. See, we spend so much time trying to present everybody else's body. When it's our body that needs presented. My body, your, my body. Therefore, from this point on, Paul says, from this point on, that's what therefore means, make a choice. Paul begs Christians to live a certain way in light of what God did for them. You don't live that way to do anything for God. You don't live right to do anything for God. You live right because of what God did for you. Did God do anything for you? So you live right because you can trust what God did for you that helps you live right. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? He helps you. Even when your thinking ain't right, he tells you what to think. Yeah. Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, so on, so on. And then he says what to do with those things. Think on those things. He tells you what to think about. Wow. 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 And then he goes on, by the mercies of God. Let's not get it confused. It's, we are transformed because God is merciful. 
it's, it, the, the scripture also says it's through his mercies that we are not consumed. Yes. You didn't completely disintegrate because God is merciful, not because you were slick. And none of that can earn his mercy. He did it because he wanted to. It's his righteous position to be merciful to us. Somebody ought to be shouting. That ought to be just good news. He merciful to me. Every one of us have a mercy story in this room. Where God has been merciful. The enemy is not merciful. He's not merciful. His desire is to steal, to kill, and destroy. He wants to utterly annihilate you. And we will play games with him just as if we can. Let me tell you one thing about the devil. He's smarter than you. And I'm going to tell you why he's also smarter than you. Because at one time he was in God's presence and he knows what's on God's mind and he knows what's on God's heart. So as slick as you have, you think you are, he created the slick. He created it. Wow. Wow. Romans 1 through 11, just, just note that. I'm not going to give you any scriptures. From chapter 1 through 11, chronicle some of the mercies of God. This is just a short list, just in case you, 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 you didn't get the last statement I made. Here are some of the mercies of God. Th think of these. These are some of the mercies of God. Justification from the guilt and penalty of sin. He made you right and freed you from the penalty of sin. Wow. The next one, adoption in Jesus and identification with Christ. Placed under grace, not law. Thank you, God, because some of us wouldn't have, wouldn't have survived under the law. If you were a thief under the law, they, they dismembered you. How many people would be walking around maimed? I can't shake your hand. <laughs> Y'all better thank him for grace. Giving the Holy Spirit to live within us. Not outside of us, but in us. So we have access to it all the time. Promise of help in all affliction. That's grace. Assurance of standing in God's election. He elected me. I'm standing in the, I am the elect of God. Wow. Confidence of coming glory with God. That's mercy. Confidence, confidence of no separation from the love of God. That's mercy. Who can separate us from the love of God, Paul? That's the... <sighs> Nothing. Somebody say, that's grace. And then it says, confidence in God's continued faithfulness. We are confident as we sit here is that... Tomorrow, God is going to be faithful as he was today, as he was yesterday. He's going to continue to be faithful. We get nervous, but God is faithful. And in light of all this mercy, past, present, and future, Paul begs us to present our bodies a living sacrifice. The first place of transportation, transformation rather, is not presenting your mind. I said, I said, you had this order. It looked like you would say you would need to start with the thinking, the mind first. But he said, no, I want your body first. That's 12 and 1. Present your body. Because God just does not want your mind. He wants your whole creation. He wants all of you. And the body is the most rebellious. 
The body is where the memory of sin is. Even after you get saved. After you get saved, you have to talk to your body. Act right. Paul said, Paul didn't even talk to it. He said, I get out a knife and I stab it. Because if you don't kill it every day, it'll kill you. Is it possible that we might be dying slow deaths and don't know it? Because <laughs> we won't kill it. Something has to hearken you. And that's the mercies of God too. When, when he thinks that you're about to commit suicide, he'll send something to sa save you and get you out. Because he's merciful. Yeah. And he's faithful. He's faithful to be merciful. Does that make sense? Present your bodies, and let me explain this so we, we'll get the whole picture. It, it, it's connected with the idea of a living sacrifice. This calls to mind priestly service. Spiritually speaking, our bodies are brought to God's altar. The best way to see the body here is as a reference to our entire being, all of me. And whatever we say about our spirit, soul, flesh, and mind, we know that each live in our body. That's why he couldn't just identify the mind. All, your spirit, soul, and mind live in your body. Wow. When we give the body to God, the soul and spirit go with it. Now, if I see y'all walk in in separate places, <laughs> what is that behind you? That's my mind. <laughs> what is that on the other side of y'all? That's that soul. We're just trailing each other. No, that's not how it works. All of it travels together. Yeah. And we act like we disjointed traveling as a, as a trilogy somewhere. Present your bodies mean that God wants you, not just your work. You may do all kinds of work for God, but never give him yourself. See, the more you transform, the more you become selfless. It ain't about you. Because when you're into you, all you think about is what you can do with this body. What you can put on it. What, what you, you know, you, we, we get caught up in that and, and, and that's, not, that's, not, that's not what. The previous appeal did is I beseech you. Means that the will is to be the master over the body. The body is a wonderful servant but a terrible master. Depends on what you're submitted to. Keeping it at God's altar as a living sacrifice keeps the body where it should be. A living sacrifice. Let's talk about that living sacrifice. First century people, both Jews and pagan, knew firsthand what sacrifice was all about. To beg that they make themselves a living sacrifice was a striking image. A living sacrifice because all they knew about a sacrifice that was killed and then laid on the altar. To burn. Yes. And if it was a godly altar in the Old Testament time, it became a sweet smelling savor to God along with the incense that was burned. And the smoke went up to God means it was acceptable. Yes. But to say a living sacrifice, it blew their mind. What is a living sacrifice? A sacrifice that when you lay it on the altar, it's still kicking and screaming, yes. That's what you are. You are a living sacrifice. Because God in this day, and that's why that, that was good in that day, but now what he wants is a living sacrifice. He wants the sacrifice to be moving when it hits the altar. He wants it to be moving. And everything that's dead, Jesus brought back to life. He never preached a funeral. Because he needed to present something alive to God. 
And that's why you sit upright in these proofs because God is not finished with you and he's still presenting you alive because that's what he wants you. He wants you alive. Ooh, you ought to thank him for that. He wants you alive. And he sent Jesus to get dead so he could get alive so you could be alive. A living sacrifice. And, and I heard, I think it was Dora said one time, and the altar, the sacrifice shouldn't keep climbing down off the altar. Some of y'all, we need to get tied to the altar. You, you keep moving off. Stay up there. Because that's where transformation happens. And we don't like to be laid up somewhere. So why am I up here? Why am I up here? Kicking the, I want to get down from here. There's something else I want to do. I, this flesh just longing to, to go somewhere. I'm, I want to go around the corner. I want to see something. And he said, he said, stay up here until I work on you a little while and transform you into something else. You, you, you got to be trusted to be a moving sacrifice after you've been a living sacrifice. Because some of you can't be trusted. We can't be trusted to be a moving sacrifice. And when I said that, a sacrifice that moves away. Yes. Ephesians 2, 1, and then 4 through 6, it says, and, and, and this is Paul talking again to the church at Ephesus. He said, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and, and he made alive who were dead. So he wants you to be alive yes. in your soul, alive in your spirit, alive in your will, alive in your mind, yes. and alive in your body. Yes. Reading some more, it says, but God, everybody say, but God, but God. who is rich in mercy because of his, because of his Great love, which which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses. I like that because, but, but God who was rich in mercy because of his great love for us, even when, because of his great love for us, he was rich in mercy, even when, because of his great love for us, even when we were dead. Even when you were dead. Even when I was dead. He made us alive. Not even alone. Together. With Christ. And then in parenthetical note. It says. By grace are you saved. Woo. He made you alive. And he said, I don't want you to get it confused again. I need to jump in with grace again. By grace are you saved. And then he goes on to say that, uh, that, that, that when we, uh, 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 after he said that, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. Not only did he bring you back to life, he gave you a high seat to sit in. Somebody say transform. transform. He changed your seat. He took you out of the electric chair and put you in the mercy chair. Yes. You change seats. Yes. But you're not just in any seat. You're sitting as if I was holding a baby in my lap. You're seated with Jesus. Yes. You sit it right there with him. So when God talks about you, he has to talk to Jesus. When Satan comes to accuse you, he has to talk to you through Jesus. When he tries to mess with you, he's got to mess with you through Jesus because of where you're sitting. And not only are you seated with Jesus at the right hand of the Father, you, you're in close proximity to God. Do you know where you are? Do you know where you're sitting because you've been transformed? 
You fell apart in the cocoon. Thank you, Jesus. What you look, used to look like, it was dismembered and changed. Where was the cocoon? Somebody says, at Calvary. In a grave with a stone in front of it. So when he came out, you came out. <laughs> That's why you can't renege on who you are. In him. Oh, he kept the essence of who you are, what he really wanted out of you, but he knew what you do. Because when you were in the larvae stage, he fed you enough so when you became a butterfly, you could be sustained for life. Oh, God. Somebody say mercy. Mercy means he had a plan for me when I was at a lower functioning place. I didn't even have it together. I was trying to become something. I was trying to grow into what I needed to be. But the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, you ain't a whole creature. We were talking about elderly people before service, Doc. And what old is. But I thank God that when I look into Scripture, I'm new. I'm old new. I'm not the same anymore. And when you accept the responsibility of your newness, you'll act like you've been changed. Yes. When you accept the, the, the truth that his grace is sufficient and that he has worked it out just for you, then your activity will change even in your body. And even when you get wrong, he'll send a merciful person along to correct you. To help you stay in transformation alley. Yes. Come on. Yes. So you can be better than you were before. But if you're staying the same in and out, in and out. You're denying the process of the cocoon. Yes. In the Old Testament, every sacrifice had to be holy and acceptable unto God. Holy. They, if they brought a lamb, and it, it, didn't, it had to not have a spot or wrinkle. But in the New Testament, God just says, come on. All I want you to do is get it off to come on. Yeah, you got a lump on your head. You got a, a, a mark on your back. You got a mark in your person. You got a mark in your character. But come on. Because it can only get fixed on my altar. Come, come on. No, don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah you did that. You, you told that lie. You mistreated somebody. You thought you were doing right, but you were doing wrong. And you tried to make yourself believe you were doing wrong. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. You. I, I know you marked up. Everybody God used and everybody Jesus chose was marked up. Peter was a mess. James and John were jealous of each other. And even got, I think they were the one that got their mama involved. Let's, let's decide where we going to sit. Come on, come on, come on. That's why I'm scared of mama them stuff, you know. Because mama's on the sideline at basketball games is not a good thing. Don't you knock my boy down. He got to make that three-pointer. She can't even come to basketball practice. Y'all cheating. Let him play. And don't let the coach put him on that bench. And my child, he played better than him. He can't even walk good. That's when the dough fly up and the coach say, throw mama out of here. <laughs> throw her out. Yes. Are y'all there? And, 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 and so, the sacrifice God makes our life holy 
by burning away impurities, but he just wants us to bring it. Bring it. So he can transform it. The sacrifice of animal in that day was a reasonable service. And he said, when you come and you present your body, it is a reasonable service. Reasonable service. What is reasonable? What is reasonable about our service is because of what, what's produced out of you once you are sacrificed. Once you give yourself to God, then the sacrifice, unlike the sacrifices in the Old Testament, that, that they took them away and divided the spoils and they ate what was left beside the, the, the comely parts and the, the parts that were burned. They, you know, that, that's, that was done away with. But this sacrifice goes into a new activity. <laughs> This sacrifice on the altar does something different. It, it, it's amazing. And, 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 and this is what reasonable service is. The, the, the reasonable service is, 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 is what the sacrifice offers. That's why I'm glad worship was so good today. Because it, it meshed with my message today. But let me read the scripture. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, Therefore... By him, let us, everybody say us. us. Turn to somebody and say, that means using. That mean using. Amen. <laughs> Continually offer. How often? Continually. Offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Just in case you don't know, everybody say, that is. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. See, the Old Testament sacrifice didn't open their mouth. The, the sheep didn't say, bless him, hallelujah. It didn't. But you are on the altar. Presenting yourself holy and, and all right. Yes. That you can do the operation you were called to do. As a living sacrifice. You offering praise to his name. All the time. So, so even on rough days you're still on the altar saying bless the Lord. <laughs> no matter when you're going through H-E hockey puck. <laughs> you still I will bless the Lord. At all times. Even when there's a no on your desk. You say God is able to keep me from falling. And to present me falling. You still have a praise. Because you've been transformed. You're a different type of sacrifice. You're the kind of sacrifice that make the devil say. I wish that sacrifice would shut up. But you holler back at him and say for Zion's sake. I won't hold my peace. Yes, yes. So when you get in here and we, they sing and they heart out and you just looking at them, and, uh, that, that's, that's the time you ought to be continually. Yes. You ought to be on your feet offering up sometimes. You're not entertaining. They not Elvis Presley and, and you in the audience. They not uh, 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 Gladys Knight and you leaving on a midnight train. You, you called to participate in it. And so you move everything you got continually because you are a living, praising. Come on, somebody. Am I talking right in this house? Any of you got anything to praise him for? For your grace and your mercy. Continuously you are transforming me. Because I thought I praised hard last Sunday, but watch me next Sunday. Oh, God, oh, God. You let trouble dummy you up. I don't even like to hear prayers that always, Lord, we went through this. Did we? No, tell God how good he is. God, you great. You're still on the throne. You woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. And even when I don't, I'm not attentive to you, you pay attention to me. Even when I'm distracted, you know where I live. And beside that, you know my name. 
When you need me, you don't call Carolyn. <laughs> when you need Carolyn, you don't call Rose. You said, Lucille, trust me for all things. <laughs> I'm a living sacrifice. I'm still on the altar. And I'm still being changed to the image of who he is. Now you sit there and act like you don't need to be changed. You will die in the cocoon. But I'm waiting for a breaking out day. I'm waiting for a breaking out day. Where I won't be bound to a limb. But I can take off with wings of an eagle and fly above the mountains out of trouble and tribulation. <laughs> oh, you ain't ready for this. God bless you. Bless you today. Bless you today. <laughs> Any sacrifices in here? I don't hear you. <laughs> Any sacrifices of mercy. <laughs> God wants to sacrifice you to life. He wants to sacrifice you to life. Father, we thank you. And we give you praise. <laughs> All over the room. Come on, lift your hands up. Father, we thank you for this time around your word. We thank you for the beautiful example of your creation called a butterfly. Thank you that we look to it and see a perfect definition of transformation. Now bless us as we are living, moving, breathing sacrifice. On the altar of life. But thank you that on this altar there is a sound coming out. Sound of praise. Sound of thanksgiving. Sound of adoration. A sound of worship. And yea, Lord, even a sound of victory. Oh, that's the sound coming off the altar from this sacrifice. <laughs> that our God is able. <laughs> he will keep you. He will keep you. <laughs> Thank you that you're a keeper today. Thank you that you're a sure deliverer.
would say of the Lord, He is our refuge and He is our strength. <laughs> we can say that no weapon is formed against us, and every tongue that rises up against us, we're going to judge in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Come on. Come on, push. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let it well up out of your gut. Come on, come on, come on. There it is, there it is. Get over your door, shake it on. Everybody's.